Welcome back to DXB today where we are focusing on all things education. Not just education, in fact, because we're taking it a little bit further. Excuse the pun there. We're talking education, evolution and employment. Does an education get you an employment and vice versa? Experts with us here today to answer those questions. On to our next expert today. An absolute pleasure to welcome to the show uh, the founder and director of Ivy Options, as we mentioned a little bit earlier on, uh, Mary Ellen Simone. Uh, thanks so much indeed for being with us. It's a pleasure to be here. And what I found fascinating when um, Ahmed was talking there about the uh, the, the intro, and it, it made me think because, as I just mentioned, my daughter's going through the application process at the moment. Uh, in fact, she starts in September. But what really struck me is how different it was from when I, all those years ago, I know, before they get <laughs> in and start saying that, applied to university. She had to do a personal statement, um, which got me thinking, when you apply for a university, do you now have to sort of treat it like applying for a job and stand out from the crowd in order to get accepted? Absolutely. So that's one of the um, key points that we make to students when an admissions committee is looking at thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of students. Um, many of them look quite similar to each other when you're looking at grades and test scores. And so what they say and how they say it um, and what really matters to them, the values that they present is so important. Because that to me, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but that seems like a fundamental change because back in the day, uh, you know, when I was applying for university, if you got your grades, you got in and that yeah. was it. It was as simple as that, whereas now, the competition has got so much more, has it? It has indeed. I think it's, um, you know, it's, education one. is global. <laughs> <laughs> education is global now. And so you look at Dubai students and, you know, the world is their oyster. They can go literally anywhere. Yeah. Um, but what that means as well is, you know, we've seen in the U.S., for example, that many universities are getting more than 100,000 applications. What? Wow. And so um, how, again, how you present yourself and what you invest your time and effort in in high school does make a big difference. Well, Mary, I just also wanted to ask, just to add to uh, Tom's question, uh, how do they go on picking these students? And maybe if you have some tips for anyone that's watching that wants to get in a really good university, what, what should they do? Sure. Um, well, I'll just start by saying, you know, when I started my career working at Stanford a long time ago, I won't, <laughs> won't divulge exactly when, but yeah. uh, when, we, when I started there two years, uh, two years ago, or <laughs> give or take, but uh, yeah. you know, we were amazed that at the time uh, the acceptance rate was about 25%. We had just crossed under the 25% threshold, okay. and now they're about 3%. Wow. Um, in fact, this year, I think they'll cross under the 3% threshold. And okay. so there's a, um, there's a sea change in terms of what students need to do to really stand out in the process. And I think there's a big misnomer in Dubai that you have to be a well-rounded kid. Yes. I have, we have <laughs> students who come to us all the time who say, I, I play this sport, I do MUN, I play music, yeah. um, you know, I'm, I'm in these Full 12, package, 12 sure. activities, yeah. right? But everything they do is at a surface level. Okay. And so what universities really value is depth and uh, they value students who are committed to something and who grow that both in depth and breadth over the four years of high school. So instead of being in so many different things, you just focus on one thing? Yes, pick, okay. pick one or two things that you're really, really excited about and then do those things really well. I should have done that maybe. Go <laughs> feel, it, feel a little bit guilty right now because that's what I've been telling my daughter. Is as I've been saying earlier on, my daughter's going to be going to uni soon. And I'm like, you have to be very well-rounded. You have to do this. <laughs> you have to do that. But anyway, since we mentioned earlier on how there are a multitude of schools here in, the, in Dubai, the thing is there are so many different curriculums as well. So does it matter when you're choosing your university about what curriculum you're in now? Say your IB, your US, British, does it matter at all? So, I mean, university admissions officers know and value all of these curricula. There's not one that's better than another. I think what really matters for parents is when they're, they're looking at their own children to think about the curriculum that's going to benefit them the most and you know, where they'll be able to shine. Um, so for example, A-levels are very deep and narrow. You choose three or maybe four subjects and you do those you know, for a two year period um, and really explore very deeply. And that's great for students who know just what they want to do. So if you know you want to study medicine, you can take your biology and your chemistry at A-level um, and focus on the areas that you're most interested in and maybe leave 
your English and your foreign languages behind. Um, Mary, I think like when parents think about going to top universities around the world, let's say your Harvards and your Stanfords, the question that's top of mind is, how am I going to afford it? I mean, every time you see crazy figures associated with the world's top universities, can you shed some more light on that, on the cost and affordability of studying at top universities around the world? Sure. So, um, I mean, I think, uh, as you said, Craig, really, you look at the sticker price and it's, uh, it does take your breath away. Um, but what we've seen this year, you know, we had our students had over 10 million Durham's in scholarships as well. And so you see, um, you know, what, what people are actually paying doesn't always match what they assume the cost will be at the outset. Uh, we also have seen a shift to European universities, which can be, you know, better value for money overall. So places like IE University in Spain and Bocconi University in Italy tend to be very popular destinations for Dubai kids um, and maybe those who are a little bit more value conscious. How does, how do admissions of, uh, let's stick with the Ivy League um, uh, uh, um, example, if you like, because uh, universities that so many people have seen and have an understanding of, and there will again be that sort of misconception, I'm sure, or, or, or thinking that, okay, I'd love to go, but I'm never going to get in there because the focus will be on the creme de la creme of American students coming out of the Amer American collegiate system to get into the universities, etc. Um, the, what's the space? How do, how do admissions officers sort of weigh up between homegrown talent and international talent? Well, what I've seen in my experience um, working at Stanford as well is that admissions officers love kids who are you know, Dubai kids, as an example, right. uh, because they're the bridge builders. So they can build the bridges between the students who were born and raised in Kansas and yeah. have never been out of there, and they can, you know, and the students who were maybe born and raised in China and have never left their country uh, before coming to They're university. They're looking for a blend, are they? Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. And so I think, you know, Dubai kids have that secret sauce where they're, they're <laughs> able to, um, you, you know, maybe. they're open-minded, they're curious, uh, and yeah. so they can go literally anywhere, and that's very attractive to... I'd, I'd actually university. second that as well. Like, as a student who studied in America, I know how much American students themselves were just fascinated by international students. And I think American universities proactively want to bring more international students to their campuses because it just helps improve the overall academic experience for their students. Yeah. yeah. I think we can stay here and talk a lot about this, but thank you so much for joining us on today's show. Pleasure, absolutely. It's great having you. Thank you. Okay, so now today's spotlight is on an educational consultancy in the GCC helping students carve a seamless path to university admissions in the US, UK and Canada, providing holistic guidance to find the right fit for you. This is Peter from Hale Education Group. My name is Peter Davos. I am the founder and CEO of Hale Education Group and we work to empower youth from the GCC and beyond to actualize their dream of studying and leading US, UK, and Canadian universities. So there's a big gap that exists here in the UAE between students' ambitions and the advice that they get in school to actualize those ambitions when it comes to higher education. So we work very diligently with students over a period of three or four years to make sure that they make the right decisions and preparing for and applying to leading universities abroad. So I'm proud to say that over the last 10 years, we've had Stanford acceptances at least one every single year that we've been in operation. And we've had students accepted to all eight Ivy League schools. In fact, over the last three years, we've had two Stanford acceptances every single year. Also, we've helped students receive over $65 million in scholarships which has really uh, made the dream of studying abroad a uh, reality for many of them. Well, I'd like to bring the gift of US and uh, UK education to every student that desires to pursue it. So we are working very diligently to expand our operations throughout the GCC and abroad. The UAE is home to more international curriculum schools than any other country in the world. It's a very dynamic educational landscape and the number of students who want to study abroad keeps growing every year.
advice there from our friends at the Hell Education Group. From educational advice to, well, just advice. It's the Roundup with Louis. Well, Tom, yes, I'm here. <laughs> No, anyway, so this is great for parents and students who are looking for higher education universities. The fifth edition of the Gulf News Edufair 2024 is back with an expanded lineup of colleges and courses. The event is going to be taking place from the 17th to the 19th of May at the H Dubai Hotel, and they'll be hosting more than 40 universities and over a thousand career ready degrees, offering the latest opportunities in international education globally. Now with that in mind, I want to ask everybody here, have you been to any one of these education fairs and how important do you think is it for people to attend? I think I've been, when I was applying to universities uh, after graduating high school, oh, sorry, before graduating high school, I was just like, uh, they used to ha hold a lot at the school that I used to go to and then uh, there was a lot happening outside as well. So I was just like, it helps a lot because you get to see what other universities have to offer from all around the world and I ended up staying here. <laughs> I think it used to be super important before COVID, but I think post COVID, we live in a changed world. I mean, everything's online, all information is online as well. Um, so I think not as important as they used to be, but for people who've really done zero research whatsoever, oh. it could be extremely illuminating, I think. Yeah, I've never dipped my toe into the, into the university fairs. I've done a lot with the school fairs when we were something like umming and about boarding school and some of the kids wanted to head off to boarding schools and they had the boarding school fair here each year, etc. And you had some of the big schools come over uh, for that. Um, uh, I think they have their play, but I take your point as well, because I think the whole, I think what changed then after COVID was the separation element, you know, and people were looking for options close to home. That's that what helped helped to bolster the UAE education or further education system massively because kids were stranded in other parts of the world and they realised that they had the options here. And it was the same with boarding schools. Yeah, yeah, and I think just to add on to that as well. So you know, education fairs are extremely restrictive, right? So I mean, you see fairs with thirty or forty or fifty universities or mm. thereabouts. There are. 5,000 plus universities around the world. <laughs> so, I mean, if you if you only restrict yourself to an education fair, you're really not getting a well-rounded education into university, at least, like, or, or an education to what is available for universities. Just for example, you know, on our platform, we have 400 plus universities listed, um, and that's still less than 10% of the options that are actually out there amongst the world's top destinations. So education fairs are very small. I think the positive thing on educational fairs, not sticking up for them or anything like that, but in terms of, is that because it's such a personal decision for parents uh, and for students as well, be it school, university or otherwise, they want that face-to-face, -face, et cetera. And they want to sort of open, expand their minds and the options that are available to them. They might not sign up there then on the, on the day itself, but a fair just gets you asking questions, getting a, getting a few of those reassurances. I know that we can do that digitally now at the platforms like yourself and, and, and other platforms, but this is just, you know, that, 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 that reassuring head teacher uh, or yeah. reassuring principal on the other side of the desk. I agree, because I've, I've been to one of these uh, fairs for my daughter before. And while I agree as well that it's not enough, there are just a handful of universities that would actually be part of this. I think maybe going to both, or at least looking at both would be good for parents. Yeah, definitely, I think so. Right, plenty for us to uh, consider um, and plenty still to come. So stay with us on DXB Today right after the break. <laughs> 